station. Calling all bad slaves from long gone till nigh. This station, the slave station, is no police station, no train station, no bus station. Calling all bad slaves from long gone till nigh. Slaves that recognize their culture never bend, never bow. Never listen to Babylonian philosophy, but interested in mother hurt and mother life and mother liberty. All bad slaves tune in to the Bada station, Jabon station. Good, yes, government. Good evening. Good night. Good morning. Good afternoon, world. This is the Rastafari International Ambassador, the man called Japoni, better known as the Badass, man from Boswak. Now, today, I'm going to present in part Two, out the west was one. Part two. Jaboni got captured for the ballroom knockings in which Bucky Marshall was actually put down the chronicle as you know it's my chronicle the ballroom knockings was a West Kingston tap dance in New York City Brooklyn the dance was actually full to capacity. The knocking took place. Everyone was present. Everyone see. Everyone know what happened. Today, <clears throat> it is still a mystery of who did what and how it went down. However, the situation is from that knocking, Jaboni was labeled as the most feared sharpshooter. It was also published at the time that Jaboni can never set foot back in Jamaica. It was also published that Japoni could never set foot again and hurt. At some stage, it was published that Jaboni was somehow out of existence. Upon my release from captive, and when I touch Jamwan, Everyone thoughted that they saw a ghost. It was like a man returning from his grave. Jabani 
is Fanboy's work in Jaboni. Return to jo the boy's work. Jaboni is here today as one of the only survivor of the peace treaty of 1978. The peace treaty is still alive and the peace treaty took a different turn and up until today, the peace treaty is still alive and well. So the peace treaty was never dead. Now, the story is about how the West was won. Before I continue with the story, Recently, I got a vice note from a lieutenant in Rima by the name of Billy Blanco, Blanco Billy. And Blanco Billy was of the opinion that I am not telling the story because I did mention anything about the Wima trad. So, to let the record straight, I'm gonna now focus on the Rima aspect of the Badlands. First, disclaimer is I am not here promoting any form of badness. I'm here simply, simply telling my story of my involvement of the entire trading from back a wall until now. Now, the control of the West of West Kingston after the 1967 between Siago and Dolly Thompson. Repeat. After 1967 election, there was a war for the control of West Kingston between Siago and Dudley Thompson. After 67, at that time, Rude Boys run West Kingston. The rudest of the Rudy was two set of boys out of Baca West. And these boys were known as the Rima 13 and the Parkites. The Rima 13 is out of Wildstone, Rima. And the Parkites 
is out of Nelson Street, Wellington Street, era. Anybody that know these two parts of the era, all these boys, the Parkites and the Remaites, comes out of the same geography era, meaning Wellington Street, Greenwich Street, Halbert Street, Race Coast Lane, Girling Street, Greenwich Street, Little King Street, East Road, Callisimit Drive, Regent Street, Upper, Upper Blonde Street, Bland Street, Anna Town. That geography era is what produced the Rima 13 and the Parkites. The list of rude boys on a wider scale entail the Lanites with from over Fetcher's land, the Southites from Gold Street, Fleet Street, Rome Lane, Rosemary Lane, Waterfront, down at the seaside, the Kirk Boys, the Warwicka Hill Boys, the Waterhouse Boys, the Firehouse Boys, now, as I have already pointed out, all these boys in my age group at one stage were all on the waterfront. The waterfront is where we all develop from. Now, moving along, in 1970, Three of my Rima Idrin, Bagadirts, better known as Stingling, or Dutty, or Liquidirts, Dino, out of Rima, Scholar, out of Rima, went to the US in the 1970s. Between these three men, R.I.P. Dino, R.I.P. Scholar, between these three brethren, they first seize a section of Florida, a place called Swamp City, over Laka. Hollywood, these neighborhood in South Florida, was seized by these three brethren. At the time, the untouchable was running Florida with their general by the name of Schoolboy. Those of you who know the history will know the history of Schoolboy. So I'm not here to tell that history. Now, Dirts took Florida and Dino and Scholar went to New York and they took a section of Harlem, 145th and Brothers between Broadway and St. Nicholas that is owned by the Rima Heights. Thereafter, the Parkites two of the Parkite soldiers 
went and uh, as a matter of fact, I was the first Parkite on my level. First, I was sent to come and hold down London. Boyark was sent as my counterpart to balance our team here in the UK. So keep in mind again that the peace treaty Boyark played a significant role in it. Prior to the peace treaty, the last engage, serious engagement that Boyark had was with myself and my team, where he was captured on my corner after a rapid shootout. Um, when it comes to shootout, back in those days, children learn what they see. In those days, it was nothing for Boyak, Wax, Waxy, Baskin, and many others to come to one side of Lizard Town Wall and shout across the wall, Badass! Meet me on road. See what, see what it is? Badass! Meet me around, sir. And that would mean strap up and come see we around, sir. In those days, sharpshooter rude boys every so often call out each other like the OK Corral. It's as simple as that. This is how we used to do it. This was not a hide and seek thing. This was a normal everyday exercise. Bada, see me a street. Waxy just come at the wall and tell me if you come meet him on a read and street. I'm a call skinny and say, go for that. I'm going to go around there. Walking up Darling Street because I'm calling if it an engagement. So this is what our rude boys to run the town. Now, Boyak was sent here in the UK. I already tell you about that, where it was supposed to be a clash between both of us. But being the kind of person I am, I was able to convince Boyark that as Rasta, we should now focus and bring in unity and do whatever we have to do to maintain the peace. And uh, it was me and Boyark that hold the peace here in London and provide the security for Bob internationally. The 1978 peace concert, because people keep getting 
1980 and 1978 um, mix up when they talk about the peace. But the peace concert actually took place 1978, April, at the National Arena. Yeah. So we just want to keep the balance. That's, so we're talking about the peace concert now and not the peace dance. Prior to the, the peace concert, 1978, April, a team consists of Lip, Tony Welch, Claude Massop, and Earl Tech Life, fly in here to London to we had a conference and uh, we dis we agree that Bob would return out of exile to do the peace concert I was at that conference Prior to that, as I already make it known, we were running over five widows there in the US. The widows. The widows, so my involvement was between London and New York, back and forth. I already established with you my connection as an original Rima man, how that went with me and uh, Professor and Dirks. After the killing of Dennis Bart, better known as Kappa, and Claudius Massop, all original road boys unite together and take a different approach and form a new alliance and call it the At Steppers in form in order to the in, to bring about an internationalization of the Rastafari tribe. Now, how where did we went wrong? We need to examine where we went wrong. The documentation and the history of internationalization of the Rastafari. The selling out and derailment of the Rastafari nation start with the elders such as, so we need now to take a look at what went wrong with us. You know, it's, it wasn't the rude boys that actually caused the, the, our, our 
It wasn't the rude boy that caused Rasta to become stagnated. It was the Rastafarian elders such as Ras Bonages, Parshanti, and Bongo Time, and many others that start the disunity, the, 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 the collaboration with Babylon against the youths. The elders, such as Bonadis and Rassis store and travel to London to participate in a Rastafari focus, a program which, we, which was held as a part of a wider series of cultural events known as Caribbean Focus. All of these were part breaking event which conferred a A conflict between the mission to collaborate with Babylon was led by Ras Samuel Livermore Brown, Bongo Time, Bongo Tani, Bongo Bigger, Bongo Stefan Fraser, Bongo Pidu Golden. Ras Ivy, Ayavi, Wright, Ras Ibo, Wright, Ivy Hyans, Bongo, Bongo Joe, Ayavi, Sister Bubbles, Sister Ayana, Sister Hesmin, and Ras Maurice Clark. Muta Baruka accompanied the delegation to several venues, including their appearance at Howard University. It is my belief today that all living participation of the Rainbow Circle Throne Room of the Rastafari mission should be all put on trial for the collaboration and the selling out of the Rastafari movement and is responsible for what have now becomes the running of the nation by Babylon. Stay tuned for my gift, my Xmas gift, uh, my Kwanzaa Musa Saba gift to the Rastafari new faculty in my next podcast. Keep it locked.